this episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. The measures must be dropped here and now. Our lives can't go on like this. It's either them or us. Otherwise, we'll see the same that's happened in Tunisia or Libya. At some point, the same will happen here. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine, where the incendiary revolutionary fire of the motherfucking... When are you going to talk about Egypt? I am your host, The Stimulator, and this week in Madison, Wisconsin, thousands... As I was saying, thousands of labor activists... When the fuck are you going to talk about Egypt? Chill the fuck out, agitator. I'm going to cover that slave revolt in a minute. But first, I must pay my respects to... Egypt. A rare display of unity from labor unions was shown this past week as rank-and-file labor activists swarmed and occupied the Capitol building in Wisconsin to oppose the punk governor's plan to kill collective bargaining. When I was at the airport, someone asked me, why are you going to Madison? I said, because they're making history in Madison. That's why I think. Similar plans to destroy unions are being rolled out in Ohio and Indiana, and solidarity actions are spreading throughout the country. The excuse of the monkey crush sucking nutbags is that they are doing this to save the economy, i.e., austerity measures. Well, the bottom line is we're trying to balance our budget. And there's no, really no room to negotiate on that because we, we're broke. I say bring it on, motherfuckers. We've seen what happens in Europe when government cuts spending and pisses off the unions. <laughs> That's right. A general strike called by unions in Greece turned up the heat in the already insurrectionary hot Mediterranean region. But more on that after the break. Speaking of fires, it's important to remember that the current domino insurrections in Africa and the Middle East were started by an incendiary act of outrage. Mohamed Bouazizi, a 26-year-old street vendor, just fucking had it with the bullshit abused by the authoritarian government of Tunisia. With two cans of paint thinner, he doused himself and lit the flame that has been spreading around the region non-stop since December. This insurrectionary firestorm has since claimed two dictators and has infected the surrounding countries of Yemen, Jordan, Iran, Bahrain, Algeria, Morocco, and Libya. All of these countries have been ruled by psychotic lunatics for decades. Since there is no way to reason with the mentally ill, the only way to get rid of these batshit crazies is by the generous application of beatdowns. As we monitor this situation carefully, we call on all parties to exercise restraint and refrain from violence. Oh, shut your cake hole. Similarly, leftists in North America are calling the Egyptian revolution a triumph of nonviolent action. But that's only part of the truth and a motherfucking insult to the brave street fighters who beat back the pigs on the streets of Cairo and Alexandria to open up the space for those who chose to express their outrage nonviolently. A manual on how to fight the Egyptian slave masters was widely circulated online. The manual advised the motherfucking resistance to bring a large pot lid to use as a shield, aerosol paint to spray the pigs in the face, goggles to protect their eyes against pepper spray, and a rose. As I type this script, Eastern Libya now belongs to the rebels. Army troops have defected to join the motherfucking resistance, and the new revolutionary army has seized weapons and has armed itself to the teeth in preparation to cut Gaddafi's head off in Tripoli. Let's see how the peace next spin this one. Lazy, I am down for equality. I am down to abolish the lottery. Down with all the government's policies. Silly me to believe. No more tuition fees. Nine grand when there's still soldiers in the homeland. Lines of divisions in Palestine and Kashmir, Afghanistan. But who put the lines there? Now we created that. Civil war wasn't born. We made it a fact. The news releases pictures saying that we're violent. But if we're not violent, the media is silent. We still got British soldiers occupying Ireland. And they wonder why we're still fighting fighting for the third world and everyone who lives there fighting the feds who pulled jody out his wheelchair we're fighting for justice we're fighting for unity bottom line is yeah we're fighting for you i get down for my people down for my people down with the government until we're all equal down with the media and the corporations i am not down with invading these nations stand up for my people up for my people fist in the sky until we're all equal we need more meetings more demonstrations occupy parliament this is our nation. As the world was paying close attention to events in Northern Africa, 
The motherfucking Greek resistance took part in a general strike that paralyzed the country. These strikes saw some of the most intense street fighting that I have witnessed since I started following the exploits of the Greek anarchists. To, to give us an inside look at what the fuck is going down in Athens, I spoke with my main man Brandon Jordan, independent journalist and video motherfucking ninja extraordinaire. Hey Brando, how the fuck are you? I'm doing pretty fucking good, man. Um, in Exarchia, which is the best neighborhood in one of the best cities in the entire world. Exarchy is a little bit of an anarchist mecca. So what the fuck is this general strike all about? Specifically, what uh, the people who called for this general strike were the two largest unions in Greece. Now, it would be inaccurate to say they were the ones who organized it. Um, there are several aspects of the sort of Greek movement that should be noted. Uh, part of it is organized labor, the other part is sort of the kind of precarious laborers who aren't unionized. Um, like Greece, like a lot of other countries, you know, a lot of people aren't, you know, uh, in, in sort of steady jobs. Um, there's a, also a huge amount of unemployed people, youth, migrants, and stuff like that who are involved in it. And some people were not necessarily protesting the same things the unions were. The unions were calling for a protest against austerity programs, which have come into effect following uh, the bailout of Greece. And the restructuring of the economy has occurred due to external factors like the IMF and the European Union. So people are pissed off about that. So what happened yesterday in Athens were anywhere from 100 to 250,000 people, depending on your sources. It was a call to turn Syntagma Square, which is a, the square in front of Parliament, into Tahrir Square, which basically means that a lot of people have been influenced by Egypt. Unfortunately, this did not happen. Um, as the large crowds moved to Syntagma Square, the police began firing lots and lots of tear gas. It's hard to know if the tear gas was the start of it or if it was people throwing projectiles. There was a fuckload of tear gas. More tear gas than I've ever seen in my fucking life. So as the tear gas began flying and the projectiles began flying, the demonstration descended or turned into uh, hours and hours of street fighting. It was pretty crazy. There's a movement right now called the I Won't Pay movement. Now what this is, is a number of people have been occupying tolls and letting drivers go through for free. They've been taping up ticketing machines at, at the metros and where people get uh, uh, tickets for buses. Uh, drivers have been letting riders ride for free. Doctors have been giving away free medical care. Wait a minute, wait a motherfucking minute. People are providing services for free? And this is a partially revolt against the austerity, saying, you know, people are saying they've had enough of it. Uh, this is also just a little bit of classic Greek anti-authoritarianism. You call the neighborhood of Exarchia an anarchist mecca. Just what the fuck do you mean? Exarchia is an anarchist neighborhood. It is known throughout Athens. Um, it's known by the police as that as well. Police do not walk alone in Exarchia. They usually, they usually walk in groups. Um, they were basically non-existent until just a few years ago and then these local police known as the Delta Police began arriving. The Delta Police are brutal. They're basically gangs. They ride motorcycles. Um, an American activist was almost killed by them. Uh, they, they attacked her with a piece of marble and smashed it into her head. She, she cracked her skull, she had severe bleeding, she's lucky to have lived. So are people in Greece trying to overthrow the government? People don't try things in Greece, they do them. Uh, there have been a series of general strikes the last few years. There was a revolt that happened in December 2008. The mass masses of Greece are very, very, very anti-authoritarian. They may not all be anarchists, uh, there, there's certainly a lot of them, most of the population is still left, um, but people are pissed off over the austerity. People are not satisfied with the government here. And like I said yesterday, the, the call was turned Syntagma Square into Tahrir Square. Now what's going to happen in the future, that's up to the Greeks, but I have the most, the most confidence in the Greek people that I do of just about any population in the world. Um, it's nothing short of amazing what's happening here in Greece. This is definitely a revolutionary moment. Some people think that the Greek rebellions are new, but can you tell us a bit of the history of the motherfucking Greek resistance? Significant dates in Greek history. Look back to November 
1973, when people had an uprising against the dictatorship. This started at the Polytechnic University, and there was a massacre there. Um, students, the military moved in, students were murdered. Um, now, due to this, due to people putting their bodies and lives on the line, uh, the police are not allowed in the universities. This has, been a, this has allowed them to be a sanctuary for street fighters who have used them to organize, have used them to actually make Molotovs because the police are not allowed in there. Now people look at Greece and they say, it can't happen here, the Greeks are crazy. The Greeks died for this right, and it's important, this is very important for people to know, that there would be nothing here if people had not risked and given their lives for this movement. Now, since 1973, there have been a long tradition of strikes and uprisings, urban guerrilla groups, everything you can possibly think of here. Of course, this has been amplified in recent years, 2008, I've already mentioned the uprising that happened there for a month. A number of very big militant uh, general strikes, um, which I, I can't see ending anytime soon. What can we look forward to in Greece in the next couple of months? The future of Greece, the future of Europe, looks to be crazy. Um, you have a lot of austerity going through this year. At the end of last year, you had major uprisings throughout Europe, um, right? major riots which I think were part of what is going to be an ongoing uprising, reminiscent or maybe even outweighing that of 1968. You had the movements against austerity and the riots and what's not that have happened in England. You've had a general strike in Spain. You've had massive marches in Belgium and riots, cars burnt there. Uh, people setting fires and revolting in the Netherlands. Although small, it's still developing. Um, there have also been movements against the cuts in the Netherlands. Uh, Italy, people have risen up against the autocratic rule of Berlusconi and the impending cuts that he's trying to push through. Um, Ireland, people now, because the economy is being restructured by the IMF and the European Union. They, people know now that their economy is going to be under control from external powers for the next 20 to 30 years in Ireland. They feel like they're once again being colonized, but this time by these stupid uh, central banks. Uh, who knows? I mean, honestly, right now it's looking like 2011 is going to be a year of revolt. It's the end of their rule as they know it, and I feel great. Thanks, Brando. And that about for this edition of It's the End of the World, as we know it, and I feel fine. Many super motherfucking thanks to all the slaves who threw some green paper my way. Rodney, Kenneth, Garcon, Ravi, Martin, Carter, Samantha, Francois, Kip, Adam, Darren, Alec, Kristen, and Thomas. Jimmy Changa. I also want to let you all motherfuckers know that I'm heading into month two of my motherfucking NCIF tour. So to find out if I'm coming to your fucking city, go to NCIF.com. To comment on this show, or to send me tips on fighting the pigs, just visit my freaking website, stimulator.tv. Now, pass the tahini. Remember, kids, you can podcast high-quality video of this show at submedia.tv.